So this is buoyancy calculations part one. These are calculating an object's buoyancy, whether it be positively buoyant, neutrally buoyant, or negatively buoyant. This is example question three. It makes more sense to follow these questions in the order they're intended to be followed in by viewing these videos from my website, www.goprocaribbean.com. So here is our question up on the screen. We are going to have to do a three-step calculation to eventually find the answer. But in order to find the numbers to put in these three steps, the best approach is to use the diagram that I've now taught you. This diagram is going to make answering the more complicated questions that we're going to be looking at as the buoyancy section continues far easier. So it really does pay to learn this diagram. Draw a square, draw a downward arrow, draw an upward arrow, and don't forget to put a multiplication sign next to that upward arrow. If you learn this diagram and always use it, you'll find these buoyancy questions much easier. The downward force is the object's weight, 309 kilograms in this case. In the center of that square on your diagram, you put the object's volume. In this case, it's 300 liters. And then you look at the type of water it's in. It's in salt water. What is the weight of salt water? It's 1.03 kilograms per liter, what we call the salt water constant. We now have our first calculation. It's the volume multiplied by 1.03, which gives us an upward force of 309 kilograms. Now we know the upward and downward force. We can put the upward force in step one, subtract for step two, and the downward force gets filled in on step three. This will tell us what will happen to this object. 309 minus 309 equals zero. This object is neutrally buoyant. It is just floating around in the center of the water column. The correct answer is answer C.